once we get set up. Okay, you're ready for me. Okay, we can start the equity committee meeting now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I am calling to order the uh, public and private equity committee meeting. Good morning, everybody. Um, first order of the agenda is to approve the minutes of March 9th. Ms. Oh, Ms. we have Green to see if everybody's here. Yeah, Linda? thank you. Thank you, Ms. Greenwood. The meeting is being Sorry. conducted as a virtual meeting, so I will do a roll call of the trustees to confirm attendance. Um, Ms. Greenwood? Here. Here. Mr. Knox? I am here. Mr. Jones? I am here. Mr. Green? Here. Okay, and Mr. Kehoe's absent. Mr. Kelly? Present. Ms. Sanchez? Ms. Sanchez? Here. Okay, here, and here. Ms. and Mrs. Jones? Present. Okay, As staff participating in the meeting include CIO John Grable, CEO Santos Craman, Chief Counsel Stephen Rice, Investment Staff Esmeralda Del Bosque, Ron Sancondwa, and Jeff Gia, and Magdalia Armstrong. Consultants include Makita Investments Group and the Stepstone Group. Trustees, please use the Zoom chat option to be placed in the queue. At this time, we ask all meeting participants to mute their mics until you're ready to speak, and we may now proceed with the agenda. Thank you very much. Um, we've been called to order. The next agenda item is the approval of the minutes. Do I hear any corrections or a motion? So, this is David, so moved. Keith, I'll second. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Greenwood. Thank you. Um, aye. Okay, Mr. Knox. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Okay, and Mr. Green. Aye. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Do we have any public comment? We do not. Okay, absent any public comment and it being four minutes to eight, um, we have a consent item and a non-consent item. And I propose that we move the hearing of those two items and then the meeting conclusion to after the Board of Investment meetings. Is there any objection? Hearing none, um, Steve? Yes, we would Can then we be in do so. We yes, uh, we're we're in order, uh, and uh, we would recess the committee meeting at this point until after the conclusion of the board of investments meeting. Thank you. Okay, probably somewhere between five and ten minutes, just so everybody can pee. Thank you very much, and the meeting is in recess. New York, who was so. Ex Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Stop right there. You want to make it a matter of <laughs> public comment. <laughs> right. I'll have PETA all over me. <laughs> um, okay, Ms. Greenwood, you can open the meeting and I'll take roll once you start the meeting. Okay. I am going to open the, the, wait, where did it go? I have to find the, um, there we go. Sorry. I, the agenda had been set aside in the very special place that I set aside things that I cannot immediately refine. Um, okay, I am reopening the Public Private Equity Committee. Uh, Linda, would you take roll one more time, please? Yes. Uh, Ms. Greenwood? I am here. Thank you. Mr. Knox? Here. Thank you. Mr. Jones? Here. Okay, and Mr. Green left the meeting, so we can continue. Mr. All Kelly's right. here. Mr. Kelly. Oh, I'm here. so sorry. Mr. Kelly. Ms. Sanchez is here. And yes. Mrs. Jones. Yes, here. Okay. Mr. Kelly, Ms. Sanchez, and Ms. Mrs. Jones are also attending the meeting. Thank okay. And do we have any staff that we want to identify so that everybody knows who's in the room? Um let me see. We don't, we don't have to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, we are on item four, which is the consent item. Um, and uh, Mr. Rice, do we need to discuss that again? Um, no. In, in fact, since um, we recessed in the middle of the meeting and the board has now taken action for itself and uh, the committees, there's no need to take action on the consent item. Okay. Thank you. In that case, I'm going to move to the non-consent item. 
And um, I believe that is Esmeralda DeBosque. Yes, thank you, Chair Greenwood. Uh, good morning again, uh, Chair Greenwood and members of the committee. At the January board meeting, uh, the Global Equity team provided an update on its latest Emerging Manager program search. In conclusion of that search, no managers were recommended. And at that meeting, we noted that staff would work with Makita to review our experience and examine ways to, to refine the program for future success. Now, as a reminder, the goal for Lucera's Emerging Manager Program for the policy is to hire managers that enhance total fund risk-adjusted return by hiring smaller promising managers. And the second goal is to promote those promising managers as they grow with Lucera. Today, uh, we want to walk through a two-part presentation reviewing our analysis and next steps. Part one, led by Magdalia and Ron, will cover the modifications made to the Equity Emerging Manager Program to date, as well as the suggested path forward. And in part two, Jeff will present the resulting recommendation. Now at a high level, over the last few years, the team has made refinements to the program approach, all in the spirit of broadening the opportunity set of prospective respondents. However, in our last two Emerging Manager searches, we received what I call more of the same type of mandates that are, are already well established within the global equity portfolio. Staff and Makita, um, we, we came up with a joint solution to move the program forward. And that is to use a discretionary separate account manager to construct a customized portfolio and who can develop emerging managers that may be graduated over time. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to Magdalia, who will launch into the deep dive of part one. Great. Thank you, Esme. Um, and thank you, Shelly, for running the slides. So let's go ahead and go to slide four, please. Thank you. Um, so we'll start off by providing a summary of global equity and the allocation to the emerging manager program. You can see here, uh, Global equity accounts for approximately two thirds of the growth functional asset class. And when we break that down, we have approximately 62% in passive, 21% in factor based. And between these two allocations, we get beta exposure. And the 18% in active is where we look for excess return. The emerging manager program is a subset of the active sleeve, which can be up to 5% of global equity. Now, the Emerging Manager Program is a, is a great opportunity to pursue alpha-seeking strategies that diversify the portfolio. Um, we'll cover some examples uh, later in a short moment. The current allocation to the Emerging Manager Program is to one manager with approximately 85 million and accounts to approximately 0.3%. So now we'll go over the history of the program and so we already touched on the objective and background. So let's go ahead and go to slide six, please. Thank you. So as we look over the timeline here, it's important to remind ourselves of the evolution and the path that has been taken and how today's program has been informed by our prior experience. So starting with version 1.0, the Emerging Manager Program was established in the 90s at the Fund of Funds uh, program, and it was U.S. large cap focused. And since it was allocated to a more efficient area of the market, it experienced performance obstacles that ultimately led to its dissolution. Version 2.0 of the program is when the program went direct. And the decision for that was to open up the program to a wider opportunity set, for example, include non-US strategies. Two searches were conducted during version 2.0 and modifications were made, as was mentioned, to broaden the universe of candidates. So the first search in 2018, three small cap managers were hired. And then the search in 2021, despite having no performance hurdle, the search yielded no higher recommendations. And some of the trends that we continue to see were manager candidates that correlated highly with Lazara's
current management program, which leads us to version 3.0 on the next slide. So after numerous discussions between staff and Nikita on um, Lacera's collective experience, a viable path forward is a discretionary separate account manager. Version 3.0 can help us overcome some of the shortcomings that we've encountered so far. A discretionary separate account manager closely aligns with Lacera's initiative to optimize the investment model. And in addition, when seeking a manager that can provide a custom solution offering differentiated sources of alpha, provide a robust pipeline of emerging managers, and be able to develop and mentor these firms in a way to help them become established and eventually graduate them. All these things align nicely with the Emerging Manager Program goals. So with that, I'll now hand it over to Ron to finish part one of the presentation. Thanks, Magdalia. Highlighted on this page are some examples of equity-based strategies that could diversify the global equity portfolio. However, we will work with the discretionary separate account manager to further develop the list. Next slide, please. Thank you. In EMP, in EMP version 3.0, what we're seeking is a manager that not only has a proven track record and has experience constructing portfolios and creating value, but one that can also source firms that align with Lacera strategic initiatives. The discretionary separate account manager will source and hire managers based on Lacera's guidelines and parameters. Other key competencies include the ability to source and provide a robust pipeline of newer investment firms, extensive operational due diligence experience, and importantly, the ability to pursue favorable fee economics and secure capacity for future Lacera investments. Next slide, please. This slide covers program implementation and the anticipated separate account manager structure. Depending on the strategies proposed, we expect a lineup of around five to 10 managers. As for sample emerging manager parameters, we are looking for independently owned emerging manager firms that are at least 51% employee owned. Firm AUM may be less than 5 billion, and we have a preference for newer firms and early stage mandates. Next slide, please. A slide 11 touches on our observations and considerations. On the left-hand side of the page, I will highlight the key observations. First, a discretionary separate account manager would have resources such as dedicated manager research teams, and maintain a robust pipeline of new firms. Second is operational due diligence expertise, which would help mitigate business risk for Lacera and assist with manager development. Third, they would be able to ramp up the program and fund managers faster based on their dedicated firm resources and experience in sourcing new firms. For the fourth and fifth observations, Lacera would maintain beneficial rights through a separate account mandate and maintain oversight through program parameters. On the right-hand side of the page, we have highlighted some of the considerations we will keep in mind as we craft the program guidelines. These include portfolio risk exposures, program benchmark, fee terms and future capacity, and manager graduation or progression. Next slide, please. Slide 12 has our summary assessment of our past experience and proposal for path forward. Magdalia's review of the emerging manager timeline walked us through EMP version 1.0 and version 2.0 and highlighted the challenge we experienced in the prior two searches, which is candidate managers had similar exposures to existing global equity mandates. Version 3.0 can fix that shortcoming and help us move away from more of the same types of strategies. Adapting a custom discretionary separate account manager approach is a viable path forward for the following reasons. One, it would provide us the opportunity to invest in niche strategies that capture differentiated sources of risk and return. We would ensure consistency with Lacera's total fund strategic initiatives, including ESG, TIDE, and the Emerging Manager Program Policy. And three, we can lean on the separate account manager's resources to ramp up the program faster and increase, increase the likelihood for graduation for emerging firms through mentorship and manager development. 
Makita concurs with staff's analysis. Their memo is attached. I will now hand over the presentation to Jeff to discuss the second part of our presentation, which is the search recommendation and minimum qualification for the discretionary separate account manager. Great. Iran, uh, why don't we move to the next slide, Shelley? So today's recommendation is for the committee to advance the proposed minimum qualifications, evaluation criteria, and scope of work to the BOI for approval. I'll cover each of these in more details in the next slide. Next page. Uh, this is an overview for the search. If approved, we will run a search for a discretionary separate account manager that is tailored to Lucera's emerging manager program parameters. Approximately 5% of the total global equity portfolio will be allocated to one or multiple uh, separate account managers, depending on their qualifications. And we'll be looking for managers that align with the objective of providing differentiated sources of alpha, as well as align with Lucera's policies and initiatives, including diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. Next slide. The evaluation process follows Lucera's standard search procedures. Uh, the evaluation team and process are listed here on this slide. The team will present the search findings, scores, and recommendations to the committee and the board for final selection. Next slide. So this is our uh, proposed search timeline. If approved, the search will be launched in May. Evaluation of the responses would take place from June to September, and the recommendation is expected to be presented in October of this year. Next slide. So here are the proposed minimum qualifications for the RP, uh, some of which should be very familiar. I'll know the items that are tailored for this search. Item four specifies that the firm must have at least $2 billion asset under management in emerging manager mandates. Item five requires that the firm must have at least two institutional emerging manager program clients with at least one client with asset size of more than $5 billion. And lastly, item six imposes a performance track record requirement of at least three years. Next slide. So th these are the uh, evaluation criteria, which will consist of six areas shown on the slides. Um, these are similar to previous searches, but with emphasis on experience with emerging manager program construction. Next slide. This slide shows the scope of work to be provided. Uh, this ensures that the RP respondents will provide services that adhere to the service policies and expectations. These include sourcing and selecting high quality emerging managers and constructing programs uh, within Lacerda's parameters. So in conclusion, a viable path forward using a discretionary separate account manager that aligns with Lacerda's initiative and may resolve the shortcomings of version 2.0. We recommend that the committee advance the proposed search criteria aligned in part two of our presentation to the board for approval. And again, Makita's support memo is attached as attachment B. This completes our presentation and we're happy to answer any questions. Sorry about that. Um, all right, does anybody have any questions or comments? I'm nobody speaking and I don't see any in the chat room. Um, I would just like to thank staff for their continued, for an outstanding presentation and for your continued efforts to move this forward. It is incredibly important that, that we bring emerging managers into the fold if we can. And, and I think what you're doing is outstanding. Um, Ms. Greenwood, Ms. Jones has a question. Oh, great. Thank you. I, I share in Ms. Um, Greenwood's um, you know, enthusiasm about this. I'm very excited as well. I just had a quick question on, um, I think this is slide number 10. Um, there is a bullet point that says that we will preference newer firms typically less than 10 years. And I was just curious of the um, rationale behind that. Um, is there an, av how is this advantageous? Uh, thank you, Trustee Jones. Um, I think uh, from our past history, we've had, uh, you know, emerging manager firms that have been, I mean, before the uh, 
criteria was based on AUM alone. And so you had firms that had been around for a long time that have been around 20 or 30 years. And these are not necessarily emerging firms or managers that have been around a long time. So with the preference for newer firms who are actually getting into the new firms and fresh, uh, fresh mandates and uh, strategies that are newer and could potentially diversify our global equity portfolio. Understood, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, does this need, it does. Um, do I have a motion regarding sending this uh, to the Board of Investments? I will uh, move to approve staff recommendations. I'll second it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you both. Um, the Who was it that moved? I'm sorry. Mr. Keith. Ah, thank you, Keith. Hmm. All right, Linda. Miss Greenwood. Uh, calling for the, oh, aye. Okay, Mr. Knox. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Great. Um, I think uh, next is staff. Do we have any? Do we have we any don't staff? have any staff action items. Okay, thank you very much. Um, good. It, does anybody want to add anything to good of the order? All right. Uh, thank you guys for making my first chairing event such a rousing success. And uh, I hope you all have a great week. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you all. Great job. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay.